My name is Levison Wood. I'm an author, photographer and filmmaker and my most recent project um, has been uh, exploring and researching the plight of the African elephant. And uh, part of that research involves a journey last summer where I walked across Botswana with a herd of elephants um, following the biggest migration of Africa's elephants in Africa. Um, and that's for a forthcoming television series, um, which is going on Channel 4 um, very soon. Um, but I also wanted to look a bit deeper than, than just, you know, being on the ground with elephants. That was fascinating because it gave me an insight into, uh, you know, what, how this magical, iconic species um, thinks, feels and, and migrates and, and into their behavior. Uh, but more importantly, I think, was is how we as humans interact with nature and um, uh, and seeing how the, the modern challenges that face this species um, are often as a result of um, you know human greed and and the way that we don't necessarily look after our environment. So I, I wanted to delve a bit deeper, and I've always been fascinated by um, elephants as a species ever since I was a kid. Um, and I've just written a book all about um, the species all the way through their evolution, um, where they came from. Um, how um, how they they grew to be one of the most adaptable and resilient um, animals of all time, and then sadly their demise over the last few hundred years as a result of things like poaching, but also habitat loss. Uh, but also on a more positive note, how you know, we can hopefully um, ensure that they do survive. So that's all the the, the project really is is a really pan Africa look at um, at the species, and and this is the book here. It's called. The Last Giants, The Rise and Fall of the African Elephant. So what I'd like to do is just read you the introduction to the book, um, which hopefully gives you an idea and a flavor of where the inspiration came from. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it and um, want to read a bit more yourself. So, right back to the beginning. Once when I was a young boy, my father took me to an art exhibition during the school summer holidays. At the time, my dad was a keen amateur painter, one of his many changing hobbies. And a famous artist called David Shepherd had brought his paintings to the local town of Leek, where they were on display. What's more, Mr. Shepherd was in town himself, signing books and talking about his pictures. Now, at the age of 11, I can't say I knew much about art, but I went along to humor my dad, who really wanted to meet this great man. When I got there, much to my relief, I found that the pictures were very good. There were lots of paintings of trains, planes, and important people. But the ones I liked the most were the pictures of animals. There were tigers, zebras, rhinos, although the paintings that intrigued me the most were the ones of elephants. Do you like elephants? A voice called out from behind me as I was staring up at the vast canvas. I turned around to be confronted by a scruffy looking white haired man who appeared to me to be very old. I told him that I'd never actually seen an elephant before in real life, but I'd read about them at school and I'd seen them on the David Attenborough documentaries. Well, one day, I'm sure you'll see them for yourself, in Africa, perhaps, he said with a patient smile. He put out his hand and I shook it. It was David Shepherd, the artist himself. Ask Mr. Shepherd a question, my dad insisted. My mind went blank for a moment, before it occurred to me to ask whether or not he'd always been a good artist. Mr. Shepherd stroked his chin and smiled. Young man, he said, Shall I show you one of my first efforts at painting? I nodded. David Shepherd turned around and motioned for me to follow him to the corner of the room, where he had some bags and a large plastic folder, which he picked up and opened. He rustled around, and out of it he pulled a yellowed piece of paper, no bigger than a normal A4 sheet. He handed it to me. I looked down, and my astonishment must have been quite apparent. Not very good, is it? He said, beaming. I didn't know what to say. My dad had always taught me to be polite, but there was no hiding the fact that the sketch of some seagulls was in fact pretty bad. I shrugged and looked at the floor in embarrassment. Don't be shy, young man, it's terrible, but you know what? I put my mind to it and spent all my time practicing until I became good enough that people wanted to buy my pictures and then I could call myself an artist. I looked at the seagulls again. I was pretty sure I could do better than that myself, even at my age, and decided there and then that I wanted to become an artist too and see for myself the wild elephants in Africa. 
A year or so later, I found myself in the steamy coastal rainforests of southern Kenya on holiday with my parents, surrounded by tall trees filled with glinting fish eagles and bewitching grey parrots. In the middle of the jungle lay a wooden treehouse made of cedar, which jutted into the canopy. Looking down from its beams in the half-light of dusk, I could see the murky pools of Shimba Hill's watering hole reflecting the tropical yellow sunlight. Moonlight. <laughs> The erupting orchestra of bullfrogs and cicadas sang a melody of exotic brilliance across the jungle and a magical scene began to unfold. There was movement below. Shapes teased the eye as blackened, boulder-like forms shifted through the foliage. Huge yet silent ghosts seemed to float across the forest floor, gathering at the water's edge. Elephants, dozens of them, appeared as if out of nowhere on their nightly pilgrimage to an ancient shrine. To the eyes of a child, it was wondrous and enchanting, and I stood transfixed. My first glimpse of these magical beasts in the wild. I knew they could never be my last. It was the beginning of a lifelong love affair with Africa and its indigenous creatures. Since then, although I never became an artist, I have traveled the length and breadth of the continent in various guises. And whenever I've had the chance, I've tried to make time to meet elephants. I've been fortunate enough to go on safari in wonderful and exciting countries such as South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe, and to trek through wilderness areas and national parks as far afield as the Congo and Malawi. Over the course of nine months between 2013 and 2014, I walked the length of the Great Nile River from Rwanda to Egypt, hiking over 4,000 miles and witnessing elephants in their natural habitat in Tanzania, Uganda and South Sudan where I was lucky enough to be invited by the conservation charity, the Tusk Trust, to see the organization's work in protecting this species up close and personal on the ground. Then again, in the summer of 2019, I spent a month in Botswana, walking with elephants on their annual migration towards the Okavango Delta, which gave me a great opportunity to see some of the very complex problems facing both local people and conservationists who strive to protect elephants. As the 21st century progresses into its third decade, elephants are regarded as an endangered species. In my lifetime, the elephant population in Africa has halved from around a million in 1982 to only 415,000 in 2019. Between 20 and 30,000 elephants each year are killed as a result of poaching and the illegal trade in wildlife. That's one elephant slaughtered every 20 minutes. Many more are forced away from their traditional feeding grounds because of encroachment by humans onto wilderness areas, changes in land use, and the ever-greedy market for ivory and animal parts. Like most people, I find the statistics horrifying, but have tried as much as possible to keep an objective standpoint. I'm not an expert in elephant biology, psychology, or conservation. I merely profess a deep interest, and I hope this book will appeal to those of a similar mindset. Of course, I'm limited in scope as to what I can hope to achieve, there are many other books out there by academics and scientists who've spent a lifetime in the field and go into far more detail. And I have included a selected reading list for those who want to learn more. But this book gives an outline of where elephants came from, their evolutionary past and their place in ecology. It examines the inner and outer workings of an elephant, looking at their biology, their psychology, and in so much as our limited understanding will allow, and how they impact their own environment through feeding and migration. I try to show how the long life and sociality of elephants is key to their success and survival, and yet might also be the foundations of their demise. After that, I explore what impact we as humans have had on elephants in terms of the ivory trade, hunting and poaching, as well as changes in land use across Africa. In doing so, I hope to summarize how we have allowed elephant numbers to plummet and the influence recent human history has had on the species, in particular colonialism and its aftermath which has undoubtedly had a major effect on all African wildlife. The policies and prejudices that we are dealing with now all have roots in decisions that were made a hundred years ago. Finally, I try to forecast the future in terms of what the world would be like without elephants, and also on a happier note, how we might be able to coexist with this noble animal. After all, the future is not yet written. What we do in the next few years will determine the next few thousand years. So David Attenborough's words will no doubt ring true to many of us as we peer over the abyss at the end of the Holocene. Let's hope we all make the right decisions. I hope that you will find this book an introductory glimpse into the lives of Africa's elephants 
and that you will go on to play your own part in helping to save them. We owe it not only to the elephants, but to our planet and ourselves to do what we can to preserve the last giants. Thank you. Thank you.